the Anzu Raptor and Raptor T. These are two new drones from a company you've probably never heard of, but there are big hopes and big promises behind this drone. We're gonna talk all about it, don't go anywhere. Hey everybody, David here from Aerial Influence. Thank you so much for stopping by. Today we are talking about two new drones on the market, the Anzu Raptor and Raptor T. Now here in my hand, I have the Raptor T. I've had a chance to test this out, but the differences between the Raptor and the Raptor T are pretty simple. The Raptor has a micro four third sensor on it, mechanical shutter, so it is gonna be great for mapping. It's 20 megapixels as well, but it does not have any thermal. On the Raptor T, you've got that thermal sensor and you've got a color camera as well, but it does not have a mechanical shutter and it is not as high a quality of a camera either. So those are the differences between the Raptor and the Raptor T. But first I wanna talk about the similarities that these drones have with the DJI Mavic Enterprise series. So there's the Mavic 3 Enterprise, and then there's the Mavic 3 Thermal. Essentially, these drones are identical to those drones. The only difference is the operating system on the remote control. I'll talk about that in just a little bit. But these, I don't know if you would call them clones, I don't know what you would call them, but they are literally exact replicas, I guess, of the DJI drones. Now, how did they do this? Well, DJI basically licensed a bunch of their technology to Anzu. So Anzu is an American company, they're based out of Texas, and they manufacture these Anzu robotic drones in Malaysia. So that actually gets around some hurdles in the United States where we've seen some issues with DJI. And God forbid there's some sort of DJI ban. Now I'm shooting this on June the 17th. So by the time you watch that, uh, either it'll be a no issue or there may be some new restrictions on drones. So we're gonna see what happens. But in that case, in case there are restrictions on DJI drones or if there's an outright ban, these drones may come in handy, especially if you are doing mapping and especially if you are involved in any sort of public safety or search and rescue. So I wanna talk about this drone, let's get to it. I wanna start off by talking about one of the biggest differences between these drones and the DJI drones, and that is there is no geofencing on the Anzu Robotics drones. That's a huge deal, and why is that a huge deal? Well, DJI does geofencing, basically they block off areas where they don't think you should be able to fly. Now, that can be a very good thing. You know, we don't want people flying over prisons. We don't want people flying over NFL stadiums on the days of games, even though that's happening, people will have gotten their butt sued. And then say your public safety, you have to go through a process from DJI to get those areas unlocked just so you can do your job. Well, with the Anzu Raptor and Raptor T, you don't have to do that. They are not geofenced. If you're in an area that DJI might have otherwise geofenced with the Anzu drone, you will be able to fly. Now, you still have to get FAA approval, so I'm not telling you to just go out and fly wherever you want, get approval, get FAA approval, but the Anzu does give you the capabilities of just flying wherever you want. This drone also has a stated 45 minutes of flight time. Now, in reality, you're probably not gonna get that much. You'll probably get closer to 35 minutes, uh, but it is stated at 45, which is, I believe, the exact same as the Mavic 3 Enterprise Series. Now, I briefly talked about the sensor on the Anzu Raptor. I was telling you, it's a 20 megapixel sensor. It's a mechanical shutter. It is a micro four thirds sensor. So you are gonna get great quality out of it. You're gonna get that mechanical shutter. So you're not gonna get a bunch of blurry images. And at 20 megapixels, it is plenty for you to crop in if you need to. And again, here on the Raptor T, Instead of having that micro four thirds sensor, you've got a much smaller sensor, but you do get a high resolution 640 by 512 thermal sensor on this. So obviously for inspection work, obviously for search and rescue, this is gonna come in really, really handy. And I can say after testing these, the quality is on par. The imagery is on par with what DJI has to offer from their Mavic 3 Enterprise series. Both the Raptor and the Raptor T have a 56 times hybrid zoom lens on them as well. So you're gonna be able to drill right into whatever you're looking at. That's gonna be great because you're not gonna to have to fly too close to anything, risking a wreck of any sort or an injury of any sort. So use that zoom range, 56 times zoom. This series of drones, just like the Mavic 3 Enterprise series, you have got sensors all the way around it. 360 degrees on top, on the bottom, on the back. Got all sorts of sensors on here. So as I was saying before, you don't wanna to fly too close to anything. Well, if you do, if you for some reason finding yourself having to fly closely to a building or to trees or something like that, these sensors 
might come in handy. The remote is gonna alert you if you're close to something. Now, it can have problem with bare tree branches and power lines or phone lines. It's not gonna sense those very well either, but it does a great job of using those sensors all the way around it to keep you from hitting anything. Now, we say this all the time. If you watch our videos, you've heard this all before. Use the sensors like a seat belt. It's great to have it. You never wanna to have to use it. So just keep that in mind. You've got a beacon on top here, so you don't have to add a beacon to it or anything like that. That's going to be sufficient for the FAA's regulations at night flight. You also have a expansion port on top, a USB-C. You're gonna be able to put things on it like spotlights, like speakers. Uh, this should be equivalent to what DJI is already offering with their Mavic 3 Enterprise series. You can also attach an RTK top hat to it as well. And what is RTK? Well, it stands for real-time kinematic. So you put this little top hat on top of this drone, you hook it up with a DJI base station or a different base station, you'll be able to then get RTK. You could also do it over an N-trip network, which is basically RTK broadcast over the air. But that's gonna give you ultra precise flights, especially important when you're talking about doing mapping, when you're talking about doing crash scene investigations, where you need those measurements to be accurate, that's where RTK is gonna come in handy. And you can do that on both of these drones with the RTK top hat. They even fold up just like the Mavic 3 Enterprise series. So let's see how quickly we can do this. Boop. Boop. And boop. There we go. So that's how quickly it is to open this thing up. And you're going to be able to deploy this drone or these drones in under a minute. Get them out of the box, get the remotes going, get the drones up in under a minute. And just to tell you how much like the DJI Mavic 3 Enterprise series these Raptor drones are, you can actually use Mavic 3 batteries in it. Now, I don't know what that's gonna do to your warranty, but we tried it out. You can use the Mavic 3 batteries in the Anzu Raptor. Uh, so again, that just tells you how much alike these drones are. It even makes the same startup noise. DJ all the way. Now, one of the most important things we need to talk about is the software on the remote control itself. Obviously, it uses the same exact remote as the DJI Mavic 3 Enterprise, go shocker there, but you are not using Pilot 2, the DJI Pilot 2 app. So if you're familiar with DJI Pilot 2, it is really easy, it's very intuitive, just takes a little practice on what all the buttons do, but it's great software. Well, Anzu is working with a company called Aloft. Aloft has been a drone software company that's been around since we've been doing things. I feel like Aloft's name has been out there. So they're a very respectable company who has put together some great software for this drone. It's all gonna be very familiar to you. The thermals where it's supposed to be, all the things are where they're supposed to be at. You've got your compass down below. You've got your altitude. You've got all of the heads up display uh, that you would have on the DJI drone. But what they don't have quite yet is mapping software. So Aloft is still working on their mapping software. Again, this is June 17th of 2024. So by the time you see this, they may have updated it. And we will do another video on this to just go over the software for Anzu, the, the actual mapping software. But from what I've seen so far, I have no reason to believe that their mapping software isn't gonna be great. I think this could be a great marriage between Anzu and Aloft. Now I've got an early version of this drone, so there are some little glitches. I was having some trouble uh, stopping the video recording. I started it and it would just continue to record and record, reached out to Anzu, but Anzu CEO Randall Warnas, he actually responded to me himself, got me in contact with their tech guys, and we were able to work through some things. There are still some issues that are gonna be fixed when they do a firmware update. And hopefully that is when we also see the mapping software. I was told sometime in June, but that remains to be seen. But let's talk about what is not the same, and that is the pricing. I'm gonna talk about the thermal versions on this in terms of pricing. But basically for about $6,200, you can get the full package from DJI. That's four batteries, that's a hard case, the smart controller, essentially everything you need. Now you gotta add on speakers and spotlights and things like that uh, if you wanna do that as well. But $6,200 is gonna get you the base kit with four batteries total. So enough to keep you flying continuously if you really want to. Now, a little bit of a sticker shock here. The Raptor T starts at $76.99 and that's with just one battery. You get the hard case, you get the remote. But then you gotta add a charging hub and then you gotta add extra batteries and then you gotta add a charging block. 
Uh, so the price obviously is going to go up and up and you could potentially, depending on how you fill this kit out, you could be looking at eighty-five dollars to $9,000. So yes, that is a big price jump between the Mavic 3T and the Anzu Raptor T. But you have to remember that there's a reason Anzu exists, and that is in case it gets harder for us to purchase and fly DJI drones here in the United States. So there is still hope just in case something happens with DJI in case they are banned, God forbid, in case they just make it more difficult for public safety or for anybody that is doing drones as a service. And it's not twice the cost. So I know it's more expensive, but to be able to keep our police and fire departments and public safety folks going, this could be a drone that would work for you. So again, it is not the perfect answer. I wish that it was the same price as the Mavic 3 Enterprise series, but it's not. If you are interested in knowing more about the Anzu Raptor or Raptor T or really any of the drones that we ever talk about, please reach out to us. You see the information on the screen below. We also hope you will like and subscribe these videos. We work really hard on them. We appreciate it. We'll see you next time.